The year is 1826. The West Point Military Academy wanted to become an institution of academic excellence for the best of the best of the best. They restructured their classes, they banned tobacco and gambling, but more importantly, in December of 1826, they went one step too far. Cadets were informed that for that year's Christmas, alcohol was prohibited. And so naturally, this is where the story ended. Happy holidays! Of course not. Booze was to West Point what Obi-Wan was to Luke Skywalker, a mentor and father figure with British heritage. As an example, Edgar Allan Poe spent most of his time there drunk and missing classes before he got expelled and went on to do, uh, I don't know, something else, I guess. And earlier that year, one cadet was so drunk that he fell down a 60-foot ravine. He had to be hospitalized for four months. And so naturally, when they were told that alcohol was prohibited on Christmas, a group of cadets from the North Barracks said, challenge accepted. Let's instead make Christmas the biggest booze celebration West Point has ever seen. Game plan. Their poison of choice was of course the most Christmassy of them all, eggnog. However, not the domesticated, docile supermarket version you enjoy today. No, no, this was a much more feral, borderline weapons grade nog. In a normal eggnog, you would have around 85% eggs, sugar, milk and cream and 15% rum. In an eggnog from back then, you would have some eggs, sugar, milk and cream and then 10% rum and 10% brandy, and 10% whiskey, and 10% sherry. Actually, there were not really many rules around the types of alcohol. Recipes would just say, whatever you have, put it in the nog. If you think it's enough, put more in the nog. Best enjoyed lukewarm. On the 22nd of December, one group of cadets snuck out of the academy to buy a gallon of rum from a local tavern, which they stored in the North Barracks Room 5. Another team went to a tavern across the Hudson River. They came back with two gallons of whiskey but got caught by one of the guards of the academy, who they simply bribed with an astonishing 35 cents. They stored the whiskey in room 33. Another team was dispatched to buy a lot of eggs and milk from several farms in the area. And over the course of December, many of the cadets stole sugar, butter and spices in small quantities from the academy's kitchen whenever they could. A perfect plan. What could go wrong? On the 23rd of December, a small Christmas celebration for the officers and staff took place at the superintendent's residence. To the outrage of several cadets, alcohol was served. For many cadets, this was the last straw. December 24th, the Night of the Nog. Captain Ethan Hitchcock and Lieutenant William Thornton were to monitor the North Barracks. They sat in their offices and would occasionally walk around the hallways. 10 p.m. The main party started in room 28 and room 5, which each had a handful of people and several buckets of nog. 1am. The cadets were starting to get really drunk, and then one of them, needless to say quite drunkenly, came to an entirely unfounded conclusion. We need more booze. And so off he went to a local tavern to get another gallon of whiskey. This is around the time Hitchcock and Thornton went to sleep. 4am. Hitchcock wakes up to the noise of incredibly loud cadets from room 28. He runs up, opens the door, and 12 extremely drunk pairs of eyes stare back at him. However, he also sees a man hiding under a blanket. Uncover yourself. The blanket man slowly gets out of bed. Uncover yourself. And in a moment of alcohol-induced, if I can't see him, he sure as heck can't see me, blanket man tries to sneak out of the room. However, he's obviously stopped by Hitchcock who rips the blanket away from him to reveal another drunken cadet. He then ordered all of the men to go to bed. Billy Murdoch was one of the cadets in the room. He was the one who came to the only sensible conclusion to be taken out of this interaction. Lads, get your guns. We need to kill Hitchcock. Tonight. Unaware of what fateful revelation just came to the cadets, Hitchcock went back to his room, when he saw one cadet in the hallway swaying his way into room 5. When Hitchcock followed him, he found 13 more cadets partying in the crowded room. He ordered the cadet in charge to open the trunks, however, he refused and instead passed out against the wall. Hitchcock ordered the rest to go to their rooms, he then went to look for Thornton, the other guy in charge. However, Thornton woke up a couple of minutes before that because some cadets had stolen musical instruments and began playing them outside of his window. He went down to check when he came across one of West Point's top students, Billy Fitzgerald. Thornton was slightly relieved to see him and asked Billy whether he knew what was going on. Billy then pulled out a sword and began screaming like a maniac. <laughs> 
He then tapped the floor three times with his sword and walked off like nothing happened. What an exit. Confused to the core, Thornton then went downstairs to check for the source of the music. However, on the way there, he was knocked unconscious by a cadet with a piece of firewood. Egno. 5 a.m. The North Barracks were now in complete chaos. People were waving swords, firewood was thrown around, people were shouting, and windows were shattered. One cadet wanted to open a window for fresh air, only to fall out and pass out in his own puke. Hitchcock retreated back to his room, and then a couple of cadets were knocking on a store with loaded pistols. After throwing wood and themselves at the door, one guy pointed a gun at the door. Just when he was about to shoot, another cadet Egno. bumped into him, causing the shot to Miss Hitchcock standing right behind the door. He then jumped out of his room, and the cadets startled and ran away. Hitchcock then went to Thornton's room, but again couldn't find him, but he came across another member of staff and shouted, Fetch the com here! Meaning fetch Commandant William Worth here. However, some drunken cadets overheard his shouting and misheard it as, Fetch the bombardiers! As in, go get the artillery to deal with this riot. The drunken crowd was now even more agitated and now prepared to fortify the North Barracks against an imaginary invasion. They started to knock on all the rooms, even some in the South Barracks, to recruit more people against the invasion and for their quote-unquote cause. Egno. However, as you might imagine, they had little success with recruiting the either sleeping, sober or rational people. Uh, okay. At 6 a.m., the morning bugle finally sounded. Alongside gunfire, glass breaking, cursing cadets, cries of pain, and people still yelling that the bombardiers are coming. The cadets of the South Barracks woke up sober and well rested and were shocked to find the North Barracks and the rest of the academy in absolute shambles. Cadets of the North Barracks stumble out of the building half naked with their clothes ripped and absolutely hammered. Most of them were either passed out, still drinking in their rooms, or actually on their way to the assembly area. However, those that elected to go were found swaying out of formation, giggling throughout, and yelling yes to every name at roll call. Hamilton, yes. <laughs> Gerald, yes. <coughs> Richard, yes. <coughs> you can call me. Dick. However, as the morning went on, most of the drunks were running out of steam and nog, and so the eggnog riot came to an end. Aftermath. Around 70 cadets took part in the riots. Although nobody died, many were injured, and parts of the academy were destroyed. Although they said that alcohol consumption would lead to expulsion, it would have looked terrible to get rid of around a third of the academy. And so they didn't. Instead, they punished only the worst offenders, meaning the cadets who got the booze, and the ones that started the ride. Meaning that only 11 got expelled. A true Christmas miracle. Oh, and remember the cadet who drunkenly fell down a ravine to be hospitalized for four months? His name was Jefferson Davis. He was also partying in room 5 and 11 that night. He threw up, passed out, graduated bottom of his class, and then he became president of the Confederate States. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so, so much to my loyal patrons and to my new patrons. Thy Eggman, Shio, Titty 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 Toot, and TJK. Thank you all so, so much. And for your lovely comments, especially you, Zia. If you want your name to be next in the credits of all of my channel's videos forever, do what they did and become one of my first 100 patrons. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Happy Holidays! Little TLDR of the story to get you into the Christmas spirit. In the 12th round of eggnog Christmas sent to me. 80 rowdy cat, 40 shattered windows, 14 liter whiskey, 12 dozen eggs, 11 people fired, 8 people injured, no bombardier, 35 cents of bribing, 4 liter rum, 3 tiny taverns, 2 broken barracks, and, and a drunk who woke up in his puke.